Hey y'all, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantabulous episode of Real Women, Real Talk. Um, I am, yes, I am your co-host, Siobhan Carter, one of the facilitators for Real Women, and I'm joined by who? I am Trinace Richardson. I am the founder of Real Women. Hey, y'all, hey. Hey, y'all, hey. And y'all have been with us for quite some time because we are on episode 38. So we are inching to 40 and you should know who we are right now. So we are Real Women Rock, uh, a nonprofit 501c3 organization who exists to create safe spaces for women to do real personal development work on themselves. And this podcast is an extension of that amazing organization. So we're going to give you a little sneak peek of what you can expect for our, our Real Women events or sister circles. And for more information, you can go to realwomenrock.org to find out about us. All right, sister, are you ready for our Real Talk segment? I'm ready. I'm looking forward to talking with you tonight. Okay, so we are in graduation season, right? Mm-hmm. We and are. Um, I've been seeing some things on social media about how these kids are celebrating. And, uh, there was one video that I saw about one kid as he was walking across the stage, he was dancing and doing his little celebrating. And the principal was like, "Mm -mm, no, you turn around and go right back and you're going to walk across this stage. (laughs) And you are not going to dance across this stage to get this, uh, diploma. So I wanted to ask you, sister, are you in favor of letting kids celebrate when they walk across the stage to get their diploma or their degree if they're graduating from college? Or do you think they should hold their celebration until an appropriate time in the ceremony? Wow. Um, So this is a wonderful question, especially for this time of year as Mm -hmm. an educator, career long educator. and now. Um, in higher ed, I have spoken at graduations, both high mm-hmm. school and college, and I have read names at graduations. I have attended dozens, if not um, many, many more of them. And I have seen them done a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, I will say for me personally, I love a light mixture of levity and celebration for the kids, like allowing the the outlier kids who are going to do their thing, let them do their thing. But for the most part, maintain the decorum. I have seen it become um, uh, a show. (laughs) Like I I want (laughs) to say a shit show. I've seen it become a really negative thing when Mm -hmm. everybody wants to do something crazy. And because what that does is it's like, okay, First of mm-hmm. all, like, okay, we've seen that already. But second yeah. of all, it makes it twice as long because yeah. we're just trying to get through this. Um, and I know some people, you know, the the decorum and the dignity of a ceremony should be held in high esteem for a lot of people. I think mm-hmm. there should be a mix. Um, the worst graduations are when everything is boring, including the graduation speaker. So there should be a little bit of something going on, I think, that makes it, you know, laughable or some joy. So that's my just a a little bit of balance there. And I I don't know how you control that other than, you know, (laughs) but I I like seeing a little bit of excitement at a graduation. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like a little bit of a mixture, too. It's like I'm on both sides because I understand wanting the child to just walk across the stage because you everybody wants to be able to hear their child's name when they're called and too much dancing like you said could prolong the graduation because now you got to wait till they do their little get their little shine on but i also think there should be a moment in the cell in the um graduation that is uh set aside for the child to the children to just let loose, you know, mm-hmm. and just have a good time. Maybe you play a little song that a popular song that they like to hear and just give them space to dance and celebrate because this is a joyous occasion. And you just never know people's testimonies and their stories for how they got to this point. So I, I do agree that it should be a mixture, um, but probably after, you know, the, the uh, giving them their diploma or their degree and calling their name so that 
everybody's child's name can be heard. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's my thinking. Yeah. I, I like that too. I mm-hmm. think what, what many of the students are thinking in the moment is when they call my name <laughs> and when I walk across yes. that stage, uh-huh. all eyes are on me. On me, exactly. And, and they're going to get some of my personality. Right. That's what I think thinking, you know. I, yes. And, you know, I have seen it run the gamut. People, mm-hmm. you know, Christian students shouting across the stage, <laughs> like, then people dug in across the stage. Like, yeah. you can see a little bit of it all. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why it, you know, it could still, I think that would be a good balance to say, mm-hmm. all right, as a group, y'all go for it, you know? Right, right. Um, but there's still going to be some knuckleheads that, that's uh-huh. like, you know what? This is my moment. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And now, now it's like, and we about to go viral. Right. Let's tape it. Somebody put it on up on the right. social medias. <laughs> Exactly. It's so funny. funny. But you know what? In all seriousness, there have been a lot of demonstrations um, Mm -hmm. regarding the um, Israeli-Palestine conflict. And so Mm -hmm. it has become a discussion in higher ed and colleges. Mm -hmm. How are we going to navigate those types of issues when it comes to graduation? Because it might happen. We just Mm -hmm. at at my college where I am. We just had one and thankfully not, there were no incidents, but mm-hmm. yeah, you got to plan for that yeah. too. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I saw one graduation where they, they told the um, people to come in with their uh, robes and their caps in their hands so they can mm-hmm. make sure that there is nothing up under uh, yeah. their robe so that they wouldn't be holding up signs and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it is mm-hmm. it is the times that we're in, you know, as mm-hmm. people are protesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just realized I didn't ask us how we were doing or anything. I just jumped right into it. I was so excited about this real talk topic. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that was a pro- an appropriate topic. I'm doing good. Yeah, I yeah. am a um, girl, as everybody can see who is watching yes. YouTube. If you uh-huh. cannot, I have long tresses of braids right yes. now. Uh-huh. They are called Schmediums. Schmediums. <laughs> they are so cute on you. Yes. Schmediums in between. They're um unboxed, um, un not list box braids, but they okay. are in between a small and a medium. Mm-hmm. And I just love the carefree nature. It's only my second yeah. time doing it. And so uh-huh. I am in wonderful ha ha land right now. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, <laughs> don't have to do my hair. <laughs> exactly. It's such a summer hairdo, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah, it looks really cute. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Real talk. So I'm, doing, I'm doing good. So if you're watching, I got my curls popping, you know. Yes. <laughs> It's, it's, like, it's a hair ready. day. It's a good hair day. It's a hair day. So I'm just really feeling my hair. Because usually it's, you know, long and down my back, but I got the mm-hmm. uh, pipe cleaners is what they call them to make it curly. So, yeah, I'm really feeling this look. So I'm feeling myself today. Really you look cute. You look got a little bob you. going on. I uh-huh. like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling real good. Yes. Excited mm-hmm. about today's, you know, discussion. It's going to get a little deep. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. So. Let us go ahead and transition into our next segment, which is the deep dive. Mm -hmm. And this has been on my heart for a little while. I was toying about whether I should even talk about it and just trying to figure out what, you know, I wanted to talk about today. And this kept coming up for me. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it on today's uh, podcast uh, episode. And so Today's topic is adjusting to a new normal. Woo-sa. Woo-sa. So um, as you shared, Trinace, you are uh, getting closer to turning 50, um, mm-hmm. which is such a celebration. And you have some things planned. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just celebrated my 46th birthday a couple of months ago. And so, and we've talked in previous episodes about us getting older and just some of the things that we're noticing. But um, I'm also realizing that reality is is really kicking in, you know, because we're just talking about graduation. So we're graduating into a new stage of life where our yeah. bodies and our lives are changing in different ways. 
Yeah. So um, some of us or some of those who are listening or watching could be empty nesters, mm-hmm. you may be a caregiver, you may be growing gray hair in certain places. Mm-hmm. So um, just some things that we're going through that uh, we have to get used to and adjust to a new normal. So uh, before I get into why this topic came up for me, I just wanted to ask you this, sister. Is there something that you recognize is a new normal for you that you didn't have to deal with in your youth that may be causing you grief or excitement in this period of your life? Oh, such a good question. Um, And I think in advance, I'm going to break the rules and answer both grief and excitement because that's such a good question. Um, But for grief, Definitely that I can't seem to lose weight as quickly as I used to be able to. Mm-hmm. I could, I can now eat less or eat cleaner, mm-hmm. but I still can't do the same things that I used to do to lose weight the way that I did before. My metabolism is just not as high. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know there are ways that I can kick it into high drive. So I'm working on that. But it's just not automatic <laughs> like yeah. it used to be. Um, yeah. And I look at my beautiful bonus baby girl who is 28 um, and even my son um, who they can eat whatever they want to. <laughs> and it does not show anywhere. So that's one mm-hmm. thing that I grieve. I'm like, OK, so I'm going to feel this two days from now or, you know, yeah. whatever. Um And then I think excitement, I really have um, a new normal for me that I didn't deal with in my youth was not worrying about what people think. Mm. Um, And I, and it's levels to it. So I know I have not fully attained where Mm -hmm. I really want to be and go because there are certain things in my life that I will do when I really don't want to care about what people think. Um, I know that's a part of it, but, but where I am right now is worlds apart (laughs) from where Mm. I was in my youth. And that's exciting for me because in many instances for my day or my week, I am not just doing something because I think it is expected of me, Mm. or I'm no longer going to do something just because you asked me to, my answer does not have to be yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not talking to the Lord. I'm talking to um, my answer does not have to be yes, and so, mm-hmm. um, and I, and I don't even have to give a whole lot of explanation. Um, mm-hmm. I can say I'm busy, or I have other things going on, or I'm tired. I can be honest about it and not feel guilty about it. That's yeah. exciting. Mm-hmm. So those are mine. Got it. Okay. So not being able to lose the weight and then um, getting to a place of just not being bound by what other people think. Got it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. What about you? Ah, All righty. Um, so this has been on my heart for a while. I noticed it's been coming up. I don't know what it is about 46 that has me in just such a reflective uh, yeah. space. Yeah. But a lot is coming up for me about getting older. And mm-hmm. what I have noticed recently, something that I'm currently grieving, is that my reproductive years are coming to an end. Oh, sister. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I recognize that I've experienced a de- I've, I've gone through a, a period periods in my life where I've ex- I've desired to have children mm-hmm. uh, for a long time. Just you know, desiring to have kids. When I was married, I was like, okay, well, this is the time, um, and it never happened. When I was younger, uh, in my teens, uh, I had two abortions, so I did get pregnant when I was uh, a teenager. Uh, mm-hmm. But I just thought, you know, it's not the right time. I'm in college, and I just feel like when I get out of college and get my life together, then I can can have children. So that was my mindset back then. Uh, and then I went through a period of um, desiring to have children. And then um, when I was really trying to have children, it took a while for it to happen. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I got pregnant twice uh, when I was about 39 Mm -hmm. and I had two miscarriages. Mm -hmm. And so after that, I just decided, you know what? I don't want to take my body through that anymore. I can't go through that emotionally anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to have to embrace, you know, this child free lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So I went through a period of time where I was just boasting about, you know, being child free and just enjoying my life and um, enjoying um, the, the fact that I didn't have children. And now I'm in a space uh, of recognizing that I am grieving uh, mm-hmm. the loss of my children mm-hmm. and my reproductive years. Yeah. And um, I think just some of the symptoms that I'm experiencing that may be uh, attributed to being perimenopausal, Mm -hmm. um, like irregular periods and night sweats and stuff like that. It's just really bringing it uh, home for me and um, making it real. And so it's like, wow, I really have to uh, accept that this is going to be my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think subconsciously I had been holding on to a hope, just a little hope that Mm -hmm. maybe it'll just happen, you know, out of the blue and um, I will get to experience uh, pregnancy and uh, giving birth to a child. So that is that is what I am grieving uh, Mm -hmm. in this season of my life. Um, And I'll just say that I, I don't feel so strongly about it that I want to do something about it. Like I don't want to. I go through the measures of in vitro or surrogacy. Like, I don't feel that strongly about it. It's just, um, uh, you know, just the part of me that does desire that. Um, So that's kind of where it is for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, um, I'm so proud of you for sharing um, because of the journey that you just described and the last time you have been vocal about it, um, possibly in inner circles as well as um, more publicly, was the child-free mindset um, mm-hmm. and hard about it. So I love that your vulnerability allows you to be honest about where you currently are yeah. um, because they're, it just, it's freeing, hopefully for you. Um, I know that it is freeing for me and others to hear that no matter how loudly you broadcast either outwardly or inwardly a feeling or a stance or an opinion, we all have the right to change um, and evolve. um, Mm -hmm. And we we don't have to be captive to anything, including our own words, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm so proud of you for sharing that. Um, and, you know, we, we do a little bit of prep. We don't really talk beforehand, but, but we, we share bullets of where we're going. And um, my heart kind of jumped out toward you because um, I, I get it. I, I don't, you know, I don't get it, but I do, yeah. you know, I, I think it's really important for those of us who are not in the, the same exact situation to acknowledge that. Yeah. Um, and then also to say, I can only imagine, you know, how that transition um, in these years, because this, this, it is so funny. I've been calling it my midlife situation instead yeah. of my midlife crisis. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> it really is causing me to think differently and feel differently. And as you say, it reflect Mm -hmm. more heavily on things. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just wanted to pause and acknowledge Mm -hmm. your acknowledgement, your self acknowledgement, because it's big. Um, I have a few questions. If I can ask you a couple of questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, So I'm I'm wondering, you already shared you don't feel strongly enough mm-hmm. about the grief process to yeah. do anything um, that would help that process along. Mm-hmm. Um, oftentimes, I think when people hear someone, they they automatically go to that IVF and yeah. vitro something yeah. mm-hmm. or they go to adoption and you didn't yeah. men- you didn't mention adoption. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to see what your thoughts were. Do you, mm-hmm. do you feel like it's in that same category? I don't feel strong enough to consider adoption either, or is that? Yeah. 
Because it's what what I'm noticing that the feelings are more so associated with is the experience of pregnancy mm-hmm. and yeah. motherhood. So it, yeah. it would it w- adoption is not a desire of mine because I don't yeah. desire I don't feel so strongly to raise a child. Mm-hmm. It's really mm-hmm. about the FOMO of I don't get to experience what I hear so many women talk about motherhood, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, coming from my, my, uh, my being my biological child to be able to yeah. see myself, you know, in another human being so that it's that piece of it. Yeah. yeah. Understandable. Yeah. Understandable. And yeah. then um, my only other question is um, if, if it happened, you know, yeah. if, if life allowed it to happen, mm-hmm. would you be all in or do you feel like, you know, because right now the grief process is the transition. Yeah. But you know what? 46, it's still possible. <laughs> right. possible. It's still possible. Right. So right. would would the child free kind of creep up on you if you were, if that were to happen? I'm just curious. Yeah. So I know I would be excited about it. Um, mm-hmm. and I think I would grieve the other side, you yeah. know. So I would yeah. grieve um the loss of life as I have known it for so long. Um, but I would be excited, you know, about having having a child and, and just experiencing uh, motherhood. Um, but it's like it, it's so weird. I feel like I'm on the fence. Like I don't feel so strongly that it's like, oh, my God, I have to have it. But if it happens, mm-hmm. I'm like, OK, I'll flow mm-hmm. with it. You know, mm-hmm. so it's, mm-hmm. it's more like that. But I know I probably would grieve the life that I have now because that would be an adjustment. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So Oh, so lifelong adjustment. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. I know this, you're driving, but I'm just so sensitive about um, how you were able to be vulnerable and share. And yeah. I'm wondering how you are coping with this season. So what are you doing? Because yeah. the grief is real it's and real. you are, you are, pro- I can hear that you're processing it. How are you processing? How are you dealing with it? Yeah. So it's it's very interesting. So it, it really, I was really triggered uh, a couple of weeks ago when I had to do an assignment for school mm-hmm. and it was, a I was in a counseling women class and we had to choose issues, one issue to do a research paper on mm-hmm. uh, where we chose an issue that a woman deals with and I chose miscarriage. So I'm like, oh, I can choose that. Not knowing how it would impact me emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where yeah. a lot of this, I think, stems from also. So that prompted me seeing how triggered I was. It prompted me to reach out to a therapist. So mm-hmm. um, I did start back going to therapy uh, this week, actually. So I'm going to process through it in therapy. Um, and I do have a journal um, that I write to uh, my unborn children. So mm-hmm. it allows me to just talk to them about you know, how I feel about them, um, whatever feelings that come up about them, how I I acknowledge that I am their mother, you know, and that I do love them, even though uh, they didn't get a chance to be on this side. Mm -hmm. Um, But so that is therapeutic for me also. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, something that I was going to talk about also is just, uh, I guess the exciting part of it is how do I want my life to be moving forward? You know, Mm -hmm. Um, as I embrace this and uh, what what will life be like for me now? How do I want to use this uh, story, my story, my pain, the grief, everything um, that I've experienced? Like, what do I want to do with it? So that's mm-hmm. exciting because it's, uh, to me, it's possibilities, you know, um, mm-hmm. of how it can be used. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It 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 gives me totally different situation. But to go back to what my answer was for grieving, mm-hmm. um, it gives me even more motivation mm-hmm. because um, I have had to say to myself, um, "You you are not going to look like you did when you were twenty five. That yeah. is not that's not going to happen." Yeah. And that is okay. You can look like the best version of yourself yeah. at 50. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm striving for. 
but yeah. to, to to get over or grieve through the the process of seeing myself as that 25 year old i yeah. think um has been a part of what's allowed me to say okay so what do i want to do i want braids i want exactly you know, yeah what do I do yeah. with myself right now yeah. um so i'm 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 working through i think what um adjusting to this new yeah. normal and what that looks yeah. like and then life just happens right so yeah. I sprained my ankle, ended up with a small fracture line. So mm-hmm. even the workout goals that I had had to be adjusted and slowed right. down. Mm-hmm. So 50 is definitely going to look different, but it's going to be my it's going to it's going to be my best self because mm-hmm. I'm bringing all I can in the moment to that mm-hmm. moment. So yeah. Um, so yeah, we we deal with the the where we are at the time, the cards that mm-hmm. we're dealt. Mm-hmm. Um and embrace. I think that's the real big thing to embrace where we are and yeah. make the best of it, as you said. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this, right? Because getting older is, you know, is a blessing because some of us don't live to see uh, yep. the ages that we are. And mm-hmm. it's in, in, inevitable that we're going to get older. And I, and I, in my 40s, I'm like, man, I never thought I would be this age. I just always saw myself as being young, you know, like 20 years like forever away. <laughs> it just seemed like so far away. And so I'm like, man, this is reality checks just every day, just realizing that it is really happening. So I'm grateful for it. And I think just having conversations about getting older and the transitions and the things that we're noticing and the things that we're seeing and adjusting to new normals. Um, And I wanted to share um, vulnerably what I've been going through because we just, uh, at the time of this recording, we just uh, moved away from Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And my heart just goes out to those those women who are like me, who may have desired to have children, but never were Mm -hmm. able to um, those women who have lost their mothers. So um, those women who um, had children and their their children passed away. And so those those uh, scenarios just really have been on my heart. And so I just wanted to share this so there, that if there is a, a woman watching who falls in one of those categories and you're grieving in some type of way um, that I see you, I get yeah. you, I understand you um, and that you're not alone. So, yeah. yeah. Here, 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 yeah. here. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, good. yes. Um, so what are what are some other things that you're doing, sister, to adjust to your new normal? I know you said um, just the you know your hair and just thinking about how you want to live and, mm-hmm. and as far as your health and just kind of creating. Is there anything else that you're doing to adjust to your new normal? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And this is going to, I'm going to elaborate more in a future episode, but um, girl, getting more sleep, sleep, Mm. hey, sleep Mm. is a blessing (laughs) in my life. And I have been the one who has existed on three or four hours, three or four days out of the week, try to make up for it by getting five or six hours of sleep, a couple of days out of the week and maybe get a seven hour once out of the week. Um, And so that was a norm for me, staying up really late to get work done, still having to get up really early. And um, and I I don't even want to do that anymore. I don't know if I ever wanted to, but I could and I did because I needed to get some things done. That must needs it does not exist in me anymore. 90 percent of the time, unless it's something actually due the next day that I have Mm -hmm. to get done. That's the only time I'm pulling all nighters. Otherwise, I have joined the nap ministry yeah. uh, as oh. well. And so it has been a blessing to mm-hmm. my life. Um, yeah. And so that's one thing I'm doing differently that helps because it gives me more energy to do some of the other things. And what I've learned in my studies about health and wellness is sleep even helps you lose weight. Yes, we hold on, you know, it doesn't help any to eat bad all the time and then go sleep on it. 
Right. But, mm-hmm. but to eat better and to get adequate sleep, your mm-hmm. body is able to process and heal itself and, and regenerate mm-hmm. and rejuvenate itself during that sleep process. And so yeah. it's really healthy for you to get sleep. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm learning that. Um, and then all of the aspirations I have, both small being in nature and mm-hmm. taking nature walks and grounding myself by taking my shoes off all the time and yeah. and touching grass or ground that small stuff that I do right now to big stuff farming and gardening and planting um a, a lot of acres where I can do that just planning for bigger and bigger when it comes to being able to do things much closer to nature and natural processes mm-hmm. all of that is helping me manage this space that I'm in, both health wise and the fact that I'm getting older, that mm-hmm. what becomes important to me is different now. Yeah, that's so, good. Yeah. 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 Um, so for me, adjustment looks like uh, what I was saying earlier. So definitely going back to therapy, um, mm-hmm. recognizing that I don't want to deal with this by myself. Yep. Uh, so being honest with myself that I need help. Uh, and so uh, find and, and it and it also required finding a new therapist, which was really hard I'm for sure. me. Yeah, um, I was with the same therapist for about nine years, nine, 10 years. Um, mm-hmm. And he was a man. And I really I felt like I needed a woman, you know, a woman's mm-hmm. perspective uh, mm-hmm. on this issue. And so um, having that first session with her and um, like I said, journaling and just giving myself space to cry, you know, mm-hmm. um, I've had a lot of crying moments uh, recently. And so that's been cleansing and helping me to release. Um, and I noticed the last time, I think it was on Friday, right before Mother's Day. And um, I just cried my little eyes out. And then I was like, oh, OK, I feel better, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so just ha- giving myself permission to have those moments, which is important for me to just release and then just uh, thinking about the possibilities, like I was saying before, where, where do I go from here? What do I desire? Uh, how do I desire for my life to be uh, from here? Um, so, yeah, those are some That's of the good. ways that I'm adjusting and being vulnerable and being honest and, and sharing my truth with others. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I know I am certain that this conversation is going to be a blessing to someone who hears yeah. it. Um, is a blessing right now to someone listening because, Mm -hmm. you know, where do we get to be our most vulnerable about things so sensitive and close to us? Maybe our girlfriends, um, but and maybe our therapists, not many places. So Mm -hmm. for you to be as um, as transparent about it, I'm sure it's going to help somebody. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you are watching or listening, uh, we would love to hear from you um, as you talk about and share with us, you know, how you're adjusting to your new normal. What are some things that you are adjusting uh, to as it relates to getting older? We would love to hear from you. Uh, So visit us at speakpipe.com forward slash real women, real talk. And you could get an opportunity uh, to be featured on one of our episodes as we share, you know, your story with us. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, Woosa. Woosa. We we took a real deep dive. We took a deep one. I know that was going to get a little heavy, but yeah, yeah, it was on my heart to share. And I couldn't think of anything else to talk about. So I was like, all right, well. Yeah, that means it was supposed to be that. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So. All righty, sister, are you ready for our put myself in his or her shoes segment today? I am. I am. I'm ready. OK. So this is an interesting one. OK. <laughs> it's been on social media as well. And I really want to know uh, how you would handle this situation if you were the mom. All right. Okay. So at the time of this recording, there's a video that's been circulating on social media about a father who is sitting in his car and he is explaining that he and his brothers jumped. And when I say jumped, I mean, they fought a Mm -hmm. group fight 
with just jumped on one person, jumped the father of the little girl who had been bullying his seven year old daughter. Oh, wow. So the father had been asking the little girl to stop bullying his daughter. She wouldn't listen. Uh, I guess him and the mother met uh, with the little girl and her parents. They sent letters home um, because all of this was happening at school. They sent letters home to try to get the little girl to stop. But nothing had worked. Mm. So this father took matters into his own hands and he said, you know what? I'm going to get my brothers and we're going to jump your father <laughs> in front of the little girl that was doing the bullying oh so, that she, so that she could see that her actions have consequences. Wow. So in this video, he started by saying, I'm sorry to the little girl um, who had to see me uh, and my brothers jump your father because you've been jumping my daughter. And I mean, you've been bullying my daughter and this is just life. And so you're just going to have to learn that you your actions have consequences. Wow. Like, oh, wow. OK. So if you were the mother of the seven year old girl who was being bullied and you learned that your significant other had done this to protect his daughter, how would you respond? Can you, can you give me a, a name? Make up his name, please. Okay, so his name is Troy. Okay. His name is Troy. Yep, Troy. Troy's wife. Husband. You're Troy's, Troy's wife. wife. Yep, or significant other. Yep. Mm -hmm. Troy, what you should not have done was record the jumping. What in the world makes you think that can be used in a court of law if that man decides to charge you with assault? Mm -hmm. And not only did you record it, you put it on social media to, to tell us something about if the girl saw it, she saw it. If the daddy experienced it, he experienced it. But now we about to lose you to the court system because you done recorded it and put it on the social media. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely, I don't think I have any problems because if it's my child, mm -hmm. I would have wanted to do something. So the fact mm -hmm. that the daddy went and did something and the daddy mm -hmm. didn't go do something to the little girl. So mm -hmm. I, I respect mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. the daddy went and talked to the father, tried to send home letters and all of that. So mm -hmm. I respect the fact that the dad, I'm, and I mean, we could have maybe found a couple of other ways but but we tried some ways too. We tried so, some ways, yes, yes. What what Troy won't supposed to do was have any evidence of it after the fact. I mean, they should have put on masks. This is for that little girl that you be the, the <laughs> now they didn't put the actual jump in. This is him just telling that he did it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So, so there was no recording of the jumping. No recording okay. of the jumping, but he is confessing to the yeah, jumping. Still the same thing, same thing, because they can use that in a court of law. Your, your mouth, <laughs> you just said out of your mouth that you did it. So, yes. uh, no, that, honestly, I, as a mother, that would be yeah. my only, you know, real mother or perceived mother of whoever Troy's baby is. I, that would be my only issue. You did what you had to do as a man for your baby girl. Um, mm -hmm. And they didn't listen to you until you, you did that. But one, I hope you don't know where we live because <laughs> <laughs> he might be coming with more than just some other people. He might be coming with some, some pieces. Yeah. Um, but also, you should not have gone on the social media. You are not 20 years old. We, yeah. I know I'm not married to a 20-year-old. So uh -huh. you you are not supposed to be on social media, sir. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> that would have been my, my, my reaction. <laughs> oh, my God. That is hilarious. So uh, if I were that woman, Lord, what would I do? So... I think I would be all over the place with my emotions. Mm -hmm. One, I'm concerned for my child, right? And so it's just like, okay, we've tried everything. I think I would be frustrated and just on board with him doing something, probably not jumping the man, maybe just fighting one-on-one, -on -one, squaring up. Um, but then I would also be concerned about the repercussions because now people are crazy. You know, mm -hmm. if this man has been jumped 
he's probably angry. He probably mm -hmm. wants to retaliate. And so I would be fearful of what's going to happen to my significant other now, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about that. And then I'm thinking about my child. Like, okay, is this little girl, is this going to help the little girl stop bullying my baby? You know? Right, right, <laughs> no, right. We done got right. all this. So uh, hopefully this helps, but it's like, I, I probably wouldn't want him to take her to school for yeah. a little while. Just right. like, let it, let it die down. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll be the one taking her to school because we just got to lay low and hope nobody presses charges. And so I think I would be a little scared of what's going to happen now um, as a result of this fight. But yeah, yeah, like you said, we've tried everything. So it's like, man. Yeah. Uh, but you, you know what? Um, and this is um, this is assuming a whole lot. So yeah. I, I'm acknowledging that what I'm about to say is a big assumption because yeah. many parents just cannot afford to do this. Yeah. Um, but what happened for me was I was working a job where it didn't it was not um, perceiving for me. I, I didn't see how I could homeschool. Mm -hmm. And then I prayed for it, put it in the sister circle, literally a real woman sister circle, and, mm -hmm. and God moved things around at my job so that I actually could work from home. Mm -hmm. um, so my mindset, because I'm putting myself in their shoes, right. Right. is mm -hmm. I, for an, an option for me would I actually be moving schools or homeschooling. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I know that's not an option for everybody. I'm not assuming yeah. that everybody can do that, but mm -hmm. that would be an option for me. Oh, we don't have to deal with these knuckleheads in this school at all. Because at home, I got the proof. You can still right. raise a smart, decent child um, mm -hmm. from the confines of your home and whatever resources you make available to them. So, absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, that that may have been better to do. Than, than taking these measures, you know, yeah. just help switching schools. But I know that's not always easy uh, for people. But yeah, that's that that definitely would have been uh, one of the options for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay, y'all. Well, we would love to know what you would do in this scenario because this is a doozy. Um, if you were the mother in this situation, how would you handle it? Or if you're a man watching this or listening to this, uh, how would you handle it? You know, if you were the mm -hmm. father, would you have taken those measures? Or would you have tried to, to do something else to protect your daughter? So uh, visit us once again, speakpipe.com forward slash real women, real talk and share with us. Mm -hmm. All righty. We are at our last segment, which is our spiritual nugget. Look and at us. I know. I want to leave something to inspire, encourage and uplift those mm -hmm. who are watching and listening. So what? Uh, comes up for you today, sister? Oh my goodness. Um, I was so involved in the scenario. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still fussing at Troy in my head. <laughs> um, I am I am learning to embrace my present. Mm. Mm. Um, my past is gone. Yeah. My future is not promised. Mm -hmm. The only moment I have is now. Mm -hmm. And when I think of there, I want to get there. I want to get mm -hmm. to that weight. I want to get to that income stream. I want to get to that. The there is right here. Like this is all I have. Yeah. Because what happens is when I get there, the the the, the goalpost is going to move, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have another there. And so to embrace where I am right now in my present is to become appreciative and grateful for all of the good things that are happening. Mm -hmm. It's not that I negate the negative things or I ignore them or I don't acknowledge them and process them and feel them. But there are always in my life so many more good things happening than yeah. that. And mm -hmm. I get to choose what I what I dwell on. Mm -hmm. And so whatsoever things are lovely, yeah. whatsoever things are of good report, mm -hmm. think on these things. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. 
Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Amen. <sighs> that's so good. Um, the only thing that I would add to that is two things can be true at the same time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You can be grieving and you can have excitement. Ooh. Both of those can exist at the same time. So true. I felt that. Yeah. And so give yourself permission to experience both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Say la. Ah. Say la. <laughs> yeah, y'all. It was so good. Mm -hmm. So this has been <laughs> another amazing episode of Real Women, Real Talk. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do in Real Women. Like, I think mm -hmm. the more we have these episodes, the more we are flowing into what we actually do. Yep. in our sister circles. And mm -hmm. so if you want to experience this for yourself, if you want more of this, if you want to come to a sister circle where we have about two hours of this, uh, if you want to come to our intensive where we have a whole weekend of this kind of stuff, uh, visit us at realwomenrock.org uh, for more information. We would love uh, to, to see your beautiful face in the circle or in the space for November 22nd through the 24th weekend for our intensive. So, mm -hmm. yeah, realwomenrock.org, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this thank you, my friend. This was so good, right? Mm -hmm. Happy with this stuff. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank yeah. you for ushering, ushering us into such a vulnerable space. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, Thank y'all for watching and tuning in. And until next time, we'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye.